right. Today we're being joined by potential AFLW draftee from South Australia, Claudia O'Neill. Claudia, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. All right, tell us a bit about yourself, what type of player you are and what got you into footy. Um, so my, my, I've got two older brothers and um, they started playing footy when they were really young. And I basically lived in the footy club growing up watching them, being around footy. Um, Mum never wanted me to play, but I think I got to the age of about seven and I was pestering Dad <laughs> asking to play. So we went down to the local footy club and he signed me up and uh, started playing with the boys for the first year, then moved into the girls' team. Um, I've always been sort of a forward swapping into the, the ruck, but this year um, playing as a key defender for the Eagles. All right, so obviously you mentioned playing at the Woodfield West Thrones. How's that time been the last few years at least for you playing for the Eagles? Yeah, so this is my third year at Eagles yep. and um, absolutely loving it. Um, such a difference going from under 16s to straight into the women's side. Um, it's just like an room and it's great to be in. How how's that transition been from playing in under sixteens and you still obviously been under eighteens level this year, but like how's the uh, I suppose development and opportunities to play in the sample W league, you know, to play against some more mature bodies and just people that are older in age and got more knowledge compared to people at the same age? How's that experience been for you to play alongside and against those type of players? Um, I think it's like really benefit benefited my foot definitely learnt off um players I play with and players I've played against. Um, mm. it's really my skills, I think, going transitioning from um, playing under 16s, people my own age who, I guess, aren't as like at the skill level, obviously, as the SANFLW players. And yeah. in incredible to be in and like definitely lifts your game. Like some of the new girls that are coming through, you can definitely see improvement already just being in the environment. Sure. Now, obviously, you've. Would have, I'm sure there's been some AFLW players that have floated through that sample W competition from time to time. Have you had the opportunity to ever match up on anyone or play alongside? Yeah, so um, love playing with Mackenzie Derrick um, in the forward yep. line. Player. Like her left foot is just crazy, and especially her sister Abby as well. Like both of them in the team, mm. that one, um, unreal, and I love it so much. That's good. So I just so obviously Claudia, you obviously had some personal achievements, being just casually winning a Brownlow at junior level at your local league level. Um, you came second and third in that league multiple times. You played in six grand finals, which is amazing too, and won four of them. Uh, there's a long list, so we'll start with those ones. But how's it been like playing at the local level to win a best and fairest and be up there pretty much every year? Yeah, um, it's been great. So I started off with the uh, District Footy Club um, yep. and we went into our first season, inaugural season of the girls footy. Both the under 12s and under 16 girls made the premiership. I was playing in the under 12s, floated through the under 16s a bit and um, yeah, we bet Henley Sharks by one point and Harry, obviously you know her, um, she played in that yep. team. So we've been best friends probably since the start of high school now, so it's banter in there. Um, <laughs> then went through the under-16 girls, got into a premiership, uh, grand final, sorry, didn't win it. Um, the following year, went back to 14s, won a premiership, and I think that's when I took out the uh, league medal, which was pretty exciting. Right. Um, yeah, and then I moved to Henley Sharks uh, about two years ago, won a premiership with them, um, with Gemma, which was pretty exciting. Uh, mm. Played a there to win one it was great and um yeah last season was my first season in the women's side and uh came third overall against my eagles teammates of evans who's an absolute gun um, yeah but yeah it's great uh i think i've been very lucky with the teams i've been in for footy yeah sure so you mentioned basically from you mentioned under 12 i think you mentioned they're under 11s it's just grand finals whether it's a win or a loss you just seem to be in every single year um yeah. Do you, obviously then you won four of those six as well. So is there any particular grand final win or even game, even if you're lost, that um, just sticks out to you was the me most memorable one of the lot? Yeah, so definitely um, my under-12s grand final actually is the most clearest grand final in my perspective, I think. Um, yeah. 
it was it was unreal. We won by one point. So um, the through was in like first win of the first group. Yeah, that's all good. Keep going. Oh, that's so that dropped. Okay, so obviously in those premierships, all that success. Um, obviously now at this level, obviously. How's it been like playing for the Eagles the last couple of years and how do you feel you performed in that time? Now, I'm just going to stress this enough, guys. So apologies if it keeps dropping out because we've had, if it happens, it happens. That's why you might see something like that happen now. So, Claudia, we'll continue on with where we were. So, obviously, um, as I said before, playing alongside those sides um, and having that memorable grand final, how have you approached this year, or particularly when you got signed at the Eagles? How did that opportunity come about first off? Um, so the, the under-16s program uh, was offered to us uh, when I was playing in the under-14 side. And um, I was very excited, went into it, not expecting to get picked at all. And then a few of the girls got pulled into a room with our captain, Annie Falkenberg, and someone else I can't remember about the SANFL. And yep. literally, I was like, like, what? <laughs> and then... Um, Funny story, actually, about the invite. So Grace, she's my best friend, and Gemma, they obviously got the email. Um, and mum didn't receive the email. So okay. I went to my room and I bawled my eyes out for about 20 minutes and then mum called me out and she told me it was in her junk mail in the emails. <laughs> so, yeah, um, yeah, went out there. And I think I've just progressed through each season. Like this season I'm going into it and all my mind is just on footy. Like I just want to play consistent footy. And I think um, my athlete profile has really increased since last season and I'm really keen for the season to start. That's good. Now, your sample W debut for the Eagles, obviously you would remember it very well in round five of 2022. Before we act, I get your take on that day, the lead up and the aftermath. There was a very special moment, not only being a debut game, it may have been a debut goal. Here is the clip. But it bounces sideways back inside 50. Good contest in there from O'Neill. Riding her to get the tackle out, but it spills back out towards O'Neill. She runs towards the goal, a blazing shot on goal. And the Eagles have got two in this second term. O'Neill gets her first. Yeah. So if you can see them three people behind the goals, that's actually my mum and my dad and my sister all celebrating. <laughs> how, how was that day for you and that particular moment as well? Um, I was actually in emergency for that round. For uh, Mackenzie Derrick, I think, made her debut, debut for Crows that weekend. So I got called up to fill her position. And yep. um, I don't normally get nervous, but I was literally like, I was so nervous. And then I think just stepping out onto the ground, um, it was just so surreal and the nerves went away and I was just ready to play footy. Sure. So do you feel like, obviously you mentioned with Mackenzie playing for the Crows, the late call-up for you, do you feel that was probably better than if you were more nervous with short notice, could you just imagine then no, a full notice, like say three, four days out in advance sometimes? Do you feel that kind of helped you a little bit being a short notice compared to a whole week knowing that it was coming? Yeah, so I think we did selections on the Wednesday night and um, Narelle said to me that I have a chance to play this week depending on Mackenzie. So I think I messaged yeah. her every three hours asking what the go was. Yeah. And then she told me and I think, um, yeah, I think I would have been a bit more settled and prepared if I got told earlier, I think. Okay. Yeah. Now that's that's fair enough. Now, obviously you've had some good teammates. You mentioned a few of them have Grace and Gemma before. Obviously, now Gemma obviously moving across elsewhere. So was that a bit of a shock? Because when I spoke to Grace Martin, as you mentioned before, and Bianca Pataro, they were a bit blindsided. A little. Oh, they knew, but, like, they wanted to say, obviously. But uh, how did you find it? Did you find it when anyone else did, or did you get a heads up as well? Um, I think, yeah, I got a bit of a heads up as well. Um, but I think when they finally moved, I think it was a bit um, surreal as well, like, just – knowing that I wasn't going to get her to play footy with Gemma again um, upset me a little bit, but she's got to do what's best for her, I guess, and the move to North, I think, might be the best thing for her and her sister. For sure, absolutely, obviously. And she did mention too that I think it was her granddad, I think, goes every training session and loves and barracks for that club forever. So it kind of makes sense. Um, but will make that first game against West 
uh, North Adelaide. Very interesting. How do you feel that will go? Will um, there be any I'm, band? Yeah, of course there will be. <laughs> um, I think I'm just excited to uh, play against them again. Like we all know what Gem is capable of. Always yeah. capable of. And I think um, it would just be a really good game. A um, bit of tension, but everything like that, I guess. <laughs> Now, obviously, Sinead Goody obviously being part of the Eagles as well. How was it playing alongside her, considering probably outside of Loz Young, she was probably the next uh, best player just in the draft pool as, in, as a whole for this year just gone. Um, what's your thoughts on Goody's, Goody as a player and what does she like to play with? Oh, I love Goody. Everybody loves Goody. Um, it's just, like, incredible to play with her. Like, one minute she'll be down the other end and the next she's got the ball in the forward. Like, um, she's a very unpredictable player. Um, great human as well, just um, unreal. Sure. Um, now, this year, obviously, being your draft year, obviously, the talk starts to rise with everyone in uh, top age of under 18s. Um, do you feel any added pressure this year compared to previous seasons, or do you take it the same as the previous few seasons? Um, I don't think I feel as much pressure because um, I think. The past few years, I've put a lot of pressure on myself to perform, but I think this year, I think I'm just going to go in and play instead of overthinking it as much as I used to. Um, but yeah, just go in, go for the ball and play myself. If it works out, if it does, and if it doesn't, it doesn't. So what are some goals you're setting for this show? So you said you played a few other positions now, recently coming into a key defender role. So uh, what are some goals you're setting for yourself as an individually this year? And obviously that long-term future goal at the end of the year? Um, I think just to play consistent footy this year. Um, I think I've been pretty consistent in my pre training. Um, yeah. I think, yeah, I think I've improved a lot since last season, but consistent footy and uh, get the opportunity at the end of the year to possibly go into the uh, draft. So, Obviously, as I said, moving into a tall defender role now, what role do you prefer? Because you've mentioned now you're going to get into a third position. There's only really four positions, or five if you include the ruck as well. Uh, what position have you enjoyed the most so far? And what are you exactly looking forward to being a defender now? What type of things are you looking to do? Combat what you were doing to other people to do to them and make sure they don't score. Yeah, so obviously um, started my footy in the forward and absolutely love kicking goals. I think celebrating goals is one of my favourite parts of footy. Um, absolutely love playing in the ruck. I think I'm a bit short for it now. Um, but I don't think I would like defence when I got told that I was playing there. But now that I'm in there, um, I love it. I think it's just taken a lot of pressure off, like, the scoreboard pressure itself. And, um, yeah, I'm yeah. six what I'm capable of in the back lines. And, um, yeah, just piss off some forwards like they used to piss me off, I guess. <laughs> very, very, very true. Now you know how the, the foot's on the other shoe now, as they say. So now you know how the defenders feel when you're kicking five goals a game on them and now you're hoping that you do that to other people, that they don't do that. Um, so who did you grow up barracking for? Um, so I grew up barracking for Port. Uh, Dad's a mad Port supporter. Yeah. Uh, um, a few years ago, I moved to Hawthorne. I think it was just to banter up the family household, I guess. But so you're Hawthorne through both competitions now, or how's that split work? No, so I think i uh, go for Hawthorne just for a bit of banter for Dad. Uh, no, Port mostly, um, but Port for the girls and second for the men. Fair enough. Now, I, I, I hope I don't get this wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was Alyssa Brooke obviously got drafted to Port Adelaide. Her, her and her family had an interesting split, obviously. Now, this is a split. Now, you've been in SA, you would know how this feels. Um, I'm pretty sure, I can't remember who was who, but I think her and her mum barracked for Port and her brother and her dad barracked for Port Adelaide. So it's like an Adelaide and Port, half and half. But but in saying that, she had a different competition. One competition, she was Adelaide, and one competition, she was Port Adelaide. You can't have that combination, can you? No, no, definitely not. I think if I, I was going for Port in any competition, my bags would be on the front. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that expression <laughs> as well when that question gets brought up too as, as well. Which draftee, I think I may know, know where you're going here, but which draftee that has been drafted this year are you most excited to see how they go? Um, Obviously, good up there, definitely played for her, um, but also Lauren Young went to school with her, played a bit of school footy with her. She's just a great human 
and I'm excited yep. to see pair it up in that AFLW. For sure. Now, what separates Lauren Young from the the rest of the competition? Because as I just mentioned before, when you mentioned about Goody as well, I, I personally and a lot of people would have her as a clear number one pick if it was in an open pool. Why do you think she gets talked about in that position? And for not only this year, the last couple of years she's been touted as number one pick for two, three years. Um, I think she's just like an incredibly versatile player. Like she's she's a tall player, great target, but she's also very agile on the ground and stuff. Like incredible skills. Like it's rare you see a miss kick or whatever. But yeah, I think she's just incredibly versatile and just built like a unit, I guess. Well, and I mean, having an ACL injury, I think it was 2022. So, you know, to have that in between all this and still be dominating and getting talked about, as I said, those years in advance as a clear number one pick at 16, dominating under 18 level. At 16 or so, just makes it even more impressive. And speaking of impressive, we mentioned Poirot with Loz and Goody. Piper Window, another top draft pick, Alyssa Brooke, we just mentioned as well. They're going to have a pretty good year next year, Poirot, with those top draft picks as well. Yeah, I think they've got a few um, young guns coming through that can uh, really help them shape their team and hopefully get a few wins on the board. Sure, absolutely. And then, of course, you can add Molly Brooke. Just... Now, in the SA team, obviously – why do you feel that the SA competitions the last few years in particular has been so strong? Because, especially as I just mentioned in this year's draft, all those names you get Elaine Grigg and Holly Eiffel, there's plenty of other names from South Australia that got drafted this year alone. Why do you feel that the SA competition, at least in the AFLW, is thriving at the moment in the draft pool? Um, I think just the uh, like more talent coming through. I think also <clears throat> because um, SA NFL like allows the uh, young girls to experience playing the uh, like more experienced girls, um, and I don't think the other states do that. I think they have their own competition for the younger girls. I'm not too sure. Correct. Yeah, but they do. Yeah, I think it's just experience coming through the SANF, being able to play against those bigger bodies, and the more experienced girls that really um, help, like benefit them going into the draft. And Absolutely, like you said, I know the spot on. You know, because in in Victoria here, they have the what they call the code sleeks, it's really using, you know, under 18s, under 16s, whatever level you're at, you're facing that level of, and those age groups, and that's it. And in your position playing in the sample W, you get all that experience and not only just against um, mature age bodies and people that got that experience, but then also at times playing against or alongside in your case, as you mentioned before, with the Dowrick sisters as well, who have that experience, and Abby in particular, who's been so impressive at Port, in that star-studded midfield with those draft trials we just mentioned. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Sure. Now... Who are some teammates or someone in the under-18s this year that's kind of flying under the radar a little bit that you feel that deserves a bit more attention than what they've been getting? There's someone to keep an eye on for the draft later in the year. Uh, 100% Grace Martin. I think, yeah, she's just worked on her athletic profile and, like, just seeing her train, like, in, like, match sim and stuff, it's just, like, it's incredible. Like, the way she's built herself this year, she's really determined to... Uh, get up there, which I'm really excited to see her play. So just backtracking a little bit, you mentioned playing now as a key defender. So what would you say some of your strengths as a footballer? Because clearly I'm assuming versatility has to be a thing because then you played, as you mentioned, in Iraq and up forward and now going in defence. Yeah, um, versatility is a big one. But I think um, like my strengths, uh, my physical and also well, I think I'm a really physical player. Um which obviously helps going into like marking stuff and um, yeah, my picking as well. Yeah. Have you got any uh, leadership aspirations at any point down the line, or if you've taken some form of role any of the Eagles, or is that something that you haven't really thought about? And just let Footy do the talking, or is it something that you've thought of or a part of as well? I think um, I'm a natural leader. I'm not in the leadership group, but I think I'm a very good player. And, um, just say what needs to be think when it's the right time but yeah definitely um would love to be a leader for the club one day so, so have you been given any advice on the hand of the draft jobs you mentioned all those girls you just mentioned that have already been drafted have they in particular or anyone whether that's coaches or anything on how to handle your draft year compared to the other few years where it'd be a little bit more cruisier than this year from a you know getting talked about and being nine months or so away from the draft um i've spoken to one of my coaches at eagles cass hartley i think uh, she just said, just play footy. Like, there's nothing else you can do except play footy. Yeah. Absolutely. Nice and basic, and that's the way to go about it too sometimes. Um, if you were to use a player comparison, whether that was an AFL or AFLW play comparison to so the type of player you play like, um, who would you say that would be? Um, 
I think in the past, I think I would compare myself to, yeah, like Gemma Houghton's and stuff as your big body forward yep. and stuff. Now that I'm playing in the back lines, maybe like a Sarah Allen, just, um, yeah. Fair enough. Um, that's, that's good. So have you got any uh, – I think I may know this answer as well, but have you got any particular favourite teammates of the Eagles? Uh, yeah, I've got a few. Um, obviously, you've got your Grace Buns, Bianca Portaro, um, Joe Walters. Um, and Astrid Gawley are up there. Yeah. Nice. Uh, did you ever play any other sports growing up or even still now? Yeah. So I played uh, netball when I was four. Started when I yep. was four. Uh, stopped my first year into Eagles. So when I was about 16, I stopped. Okay. Did, how did you feel you were at the sport? Did you think you were pretty good at it or was just kind of a hobby? Like how would you say you were as a netball player? Oh, I've got a few trophies to back me up in the <laughs> uh, name some. Um, I think I went back to back for about uh, seven seasons in a row for best and fairest. So I think I was a pretty good netballer. Yeah. Very good. So best and fairest grand finals, which is attached to your name, it seems Claudia at the moment. Yeah, definitely a lot of grand finals in netball as well. Lots of success in the netball field as well. Yeah. So, you, so for the teams you've been a part of and individually winning BNFs and being other all the time, you don't know what losing means. Oh, no. <laughs> I think uh, I think it was a bit of a reality check when um, I did come into Eagles because obviously uh, we, we did win, but uh, we didn't finish um, in playing in final, which I do. And I think um, that drives me to want to play finals more and realising how uh, fortunate to play finals. Absolutely. Now, obviously, you said you've played as a forward as well in the top pass. So what do you feel is one of the best goals you ever kicked? Is there any particular type of goal that stri strikes out or would it be that debut goal? Is um, it in the, the, the debut goal is pretty good. Um, I think there's this one. I, th I was playing development for Eagles. I think it was after my round and um, it was check side snap at south from the boundary. I think that was my favourite goal, yeah. Very, very impressive. If you were able to hypothetically design your own goal year type contention, would it be the one that you already just mentioned, the checks off on the boundary? A torp, how would you, if you were to be as unrealistic as you want, what would be the best uh, type of goal you'd want to kick? Um, I reckon running off from the middle, palm someone off and just <laughs> launch from 50. I think that would be a killer goal of the year. I've thought about this one a lot. <laughs> well, I love the little detail you mentioned about powering through the middle, basically doing the Dustin Martin fend-off style of play as well because from a lot of the answers, even, even, even myself, I hadn't even thought of it that way as well. I'd go, yeah, I'll, I'll do a check stuff on the bench, but I've done that as well. But uh, it's good to have a little bit more detail and make it sound nice. That would be pretty impressive and some season players do that as well. Uh, what is one of the best individual games you feel you've played? And I'm sure there's a lot for you considering you mentioned all these BNF victories and um, top three performances as well. Is there any game that sh strikes out to you, in particular individually, like a certain game where you might get a certain amount of goals, possessions, impact? I think round 10 in the 2020 season, we versed Norwood. Uh, I think that was when all the state girls went out. And um, so, yeah, it was just kind of a flat team. Um, mm. But... We played really well as a team and um, individually I think I stood out, I think, three goals and got a few possessions. But I just felt like I needed to step up that game and I think I performed really well that game, yeah. That's good. Any nicknames you get at the club that you like or dislike? Um, I've got Claude's and Kay, most of the girls. Yeah. Don't really like my full name. I think it's too long on the footy field. <laughs> All right, we'll go with Claude's now for the rest of this interview. So. That's a good one. Um, who would you say is the toughest opponent you've ever had to match up on in any of the Sample W sides or even locally? Is there anyone that comes to mind? Any current AFLW players you've had to match up on the odd games that they play or someone that's at the state league level now? Um, I think my hardest opponent I've had to match up on is Christy Harvey from North Adelaide. She just mops up back lines, got a good marking on her and she's very physical like me. Um, but, yeah, she was very hard to play on. That's good. Now, who do you feel is the best player in the AFLW competition? Because obviously it's so even this year. I know 
the votes would say the Mon Conti won by seven votes, but, you know, you still got Laura Garner, Charlie Roper, Jazz Garner, Astrid Dell, Ebony Marinoff. There's so many names I could list off. Ali yeah. Morfitt, who you have in that spot? Um, I think at the moment, I know she took out the medal, but Mon Conti just had an absolutely thrilling mm. season. Absolutely. Ed Marinoff and Anne Hatchard just still votes off each other, I think. So, yes. Yeah, um, they'd definitely be up there, but Mon Conti, I reckon. Definitely. And I'm pretty sure she's been in the competition, I think, for five years at the time of the end. She's won, obviously, that uh, best of rest of the league and then won five club BNFs as well, which is just pretty impressive. And probably the marquee player, too, of the competition as well, from not just from a playing point of view, you know, popularity and you add all those factors, marketing and everything around it. Yeah, definitely, yeah. And to make it top it all off, playing for the Melbourne Boomers as well, multi-sports talented as well. And I think she recently reached 100 games, I think, in that competition at 25, I think she's 23. So it's even more impressive. What's something someone does at the club that you cannot stand, whether that's trying to scare people from around the corner, jump out of bins, leave rubbish around? What's something that ticks you off? Um, Leah Cutting's choice of music. <laughs> um she gets on the speaker and, um, yeah, I vibe, I don't think. Pick <laughs> stick to footy, it sounds like. Um, yep. not, the, not the music. Any favourite TV shows, movies, any hobbies outside of footy that you like doing outside of the netball as well? Um, favourite shows, probably Outer Banks. Um, and, yeah, I like uh, being in the country. We've got a shack up York Peninsula, so... That's Nice, go ride the motorbikes around. That's always fun. That's good. That's good. So with the TV show that you just mentioned, is it? are you one of those people that when they got their favourite type of shows, no matter if you've seen it before, you're going to rewatch it over and over again, or you want it's like a one and done, I've seen it, not watching it again? Oh, I watch, rewatch all my shows, I think. Very predictable. Yeah. That's the same here for sure. If you could... Again, again, this can be this hypothetically speaking, be as unrealistic as you want. If you could approach any player or players from another club to join, let's say hypothetically the Crows, uh, who would you want to approach and why? Um, from men's and women's, or just women? Oh, yeah, for either or. Yeah. Um, I think I'd snatch up Zach Butters. I think, yeah. Very, good, very good choice. People generally just pick, you know, their favorite player, but you know, to pick someone like Zach, obviously. Prime age for, you know, staff power is only 23, I think he might be, not even that, 22 actually. Um, he's got his years ahead of him and you're picking someone that's potentially now already one of the, the best mid in the comp, if not one of the top three or five. Um, who loves the limelight, the attention of the camera at the Eagles that uh, can't get enough and they know exactly where the camera is to over-celebrate a goal, scare people, or just in general they know where the camera is and they love it? Um, I think Cheryl Walters, definitely. She always knows where the camera is. Um, always got a cheeky grin on her face. So, yeah, probably her. So, now you mentioned briefly before goal celebrations and you're loving it. What goal celebration did you bring out that you love the most? Or is there any you've been working on? I know you're going to play in defence now, but is there any in the back in your back pocket per se to bring out if you were to score another one? Yeah, when I run through for the cheeky handball. Um, I like the double... Double fingers. I think that one's my favourite. That's good. Uh, what are your thoughts on, um, in terms of goals? I mean, where would you rank some of these other ones? So, where they do the double cobra with the double arm one, uh, they do the jumper pull. How would you rank those ones? Would they be up there? Or is there some other ones that I haven't mentioned that you don't mind? Well, even if you don't do it personally, but that you just enjoy seeing other people do or have done. Yeah, I think it uh, depends on the goal, I think. Um, I like... I like Charlie Dixon's big one-arm flex. I think that one's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah that, that's, that's definitely gone from Charlie. Now, Mark, I think I know this answer, but Mark or goal of the year, which one would you rather do and why? Oh, um, I don't know. I think um, I'd like to take Mark of the year, I think, get on someone's shoulders, take a massive specky. Nice photo frame for Father's Day or something. <laughs> I, I personally, I would choose goal just because when I used to play, I was a forward and I, like you, love the celebrations, love all that part of it. But at least with the mark, if it's being filmed, the game's covered or there's photographers there or whatever, you've got that memory of a photo. Whereas the video, it's perfect, but you can't put it as a pitch, profile pic or anything. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah. I think I'd pick mark 
I can wrap it up by the day or something. So, and you've probably got some goal of the years as well, have you? Or you haven't ticked that one off the resume yet? No, nah, no, nah, I haven't ticked that one off the resume yet. No, neither. <laughs> Yeah, well, maybe that's one of the next things. Just try and sit down again and get a just get a casual goalie, not just a casual goal, but a goalie. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, interstate trips. Have you ever been on any interstate trips for footy? And if so, how have they been? Um, I haven't actually. No, haven't been on an interstate trip for footy. Just played in SA. Yeah, nice. If you got obviously some, we mentioned some goals earlier. To just play footy and everything like that. But is there any aims to play for the state championship side? Obviously, because this year, obviously, there's so many stars out of names. And like you mentioned with Gemma, when she was there last year, and Grace Martin as well. Do you have any aim, like those two girls in particular, to play in that state side? But that is also, you talk about experience. you will be playing against the best of the best, not only playing alongside your best state league players, at under-18 level players, against the other state's best as well. Yeah, I think it would be really cool to um, make the team. I think it would be a really great opportunity. To, uh, get my name out there and um, just show them what I'm capable of, and yeah, I think it'd be a really great opportunity. So, have you had ever had any AFL or AFLW player interactions as a fan? Um, and if so, how did they go? Because I hear some interesting stories. I think Gemma mentioned, I don't know if you had this, I think it was Gemma or Grace, I was pretty sure it was Gemma. She was at work and she just had randomly had these bunch of AFLW players, I think, come in the store. And she had said she had like this fangirl moment. Do I work? Do I do the fangirl moment? Went back and told the manager, she said, and she's like, so and so's here, so and so's here. And they said to Gemma, I don't know who that is. So it's like, how would you be in that position as well? If that if you haven't had that happen, how would you react in that position as well? Yeah, I haven't had that one happen to me, but um I fango in the moment and get their signatures or something, drop drop what I'm doing get the signatures and get back to work, I think. I'd probably make their food really good so they remember me or something. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that'd be one way. So yeah, have you had any, in general, had any AFL or AFLW player in like at games or anything? Or at, even at training to the Eagles, have they any come by besides Abby? Um, I don't think so. Uh, a few weeks ago, uh, me and my family went to a comedy show and I saw Sam and Power Pepper and I kind of fanned out a bit, but... My brother's got embarrassed and pulled me away. So, yeah. <laughs> Actually, speaking of Sam Pelpe, I'm pretty sure, again, I can't remember if it was Gemma or Grace, but one of them said they met her at a, um, at a I don't know, if it was a concert or something. Um, and they grew up American, uh, supporting him as his fa their favourite player as well. Um, okay, so what are some fun facts about you that people may not know about you? Um, oh, I don't know. Oh, um, both my two friends. Fake. I broke them when I was about seven last year in a Nord game. So they're fake. And um, um, I collect shoes. Yeah. Very nice. Any particular favourite pair of shoes, a brand or anything like that? Uh, Jordans and Dunks I collect, yeah. Well, if people from those companies are listening, um, yeah. help her out. <laughs> um, now, defenders, obviously now you're transitioning into playing as a defender now. Lord, so um, do you feel they deserve more love? Because obviously the midfielders, um, the Brownlow is clearly centred towards them. Everyone knows this. Rucks even started to get recognised a bit in that vote, those vote counts. And the forwards also have their Coleman as well. Um, do you feel the defenders should have their own official title of an award, whatever you want to call it, uh, but should they have their own? Um, well, yeah. At Eagles, uh, we have them uh, for best defender, so I think that's really great. Um Good. Obviously, your mids rack up the disposals, so they're going to get noticed more. And obviously, but um, yeah, I guess they could have their own award. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I feel they should have their award because you know, if you even look at the All Australian AFW side of the key defenders in there, um, they didn't really get recognised outside of you know because they have to be in the exes. It's a whole field. Um, but then, then there was some plays as well that were outside the All-Australian team, like Brenna Taranella, Heads, two young stars at the Swans. You know, they had terrific seasons. And outside of maybe their own four walls and myself, because I rated their performances, they don't really get talked about at all. It's yeah. always the other busy ones. Yeah, yeah that love. I think that's true, yeah. So now, some interesting questions to wrap up. So I appreciate you coming on, Claude. So best chatterbox at the club, who would that be? Um, Bianca Portaro, definitely. Any particular reason? Oh, she's just always in a good mood and 
chat about absolute think. That's good. A good chatterbox, then you would say. Yeah, definitely. That's good. Uh, who would be a teammate at any point if you're stuck on a deserted island with? Which teammates would you want to bring, and who would you not bring? Um, I think I'd bring my skipper Annie Falkenberg because she's a problem solver, and I'd probably steer clear of Marley Fegut. Fair enough. Any particular reason? No, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> fair, fair enough. Be nice and safe. Uh, so wrap up with this one. It's a real pleasure coming on. Who is the loudest and quietest teammates? Um, ooh, the loudest. There's a few of them. Um, you've got Poppy Waterford. Yeah, probably the loudest. Yeah, Poppy Waterford, and the quietest. Oh, that's a tough one. All pretty eagles. A um, few of the younger was coming through, probably. Yeah. Fair enough. Well, that's fair. Claude, I really appreciate you on, but I'm gonna add one more thing, and then I'm. Um, I know the pain in this. I'm going to ask you this as well. Do people ever spell your name wrong? Do they put a C in front of instead of a K in Claudia? Do they put it in O'Neill? Do they put IE? Do you get that? And if so, how do you react to it? Oh, always. Grew up with everyone calling me Claudia or spelling my name oh. with a C or my last name wrong. One L or the I in front of the E. Yeah. I used to get about it, but now I'm just like, whatever. <laughs> I mean, that's the way to go. But it's just an interesting little thing. that I have the same thing with Cooper. They put a K at the front or it's C-O-O-P-A. I'm, I'm the same as you. It definitely at least started off really annoying. So, Claude, yeah. I really appreciate you coming on with a K. I um, appreciate you coming on. All the best for the rest of the year. Hopefully the season at the Eagles go well, key defender roll goes well, and you're stopping all those goals. And then later on, that big dream at the end of the year, play it for an AFLW club. Appreciate you coming on. Thank you so much for having me. Nice. Thank you.